you know, uh, the dreams or whatever you have seen are incomplete, so we cannot say, well, you know, they mean this or they mean that. Allah Ta'ala. Okay. Allah Ta'ala. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Okay, um, another question, inshallah. Uh, it says, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my husband is afflicted with a jinn and he has been diagnosed. Um, he's okay but suffers uh, from sleep problems. What can he do? Also, what can I do as a wife to help him and support him through this? And what uh, should I avoid? Okay. Uh, avoid, ab absolutely, rise and uh, carry and fish, chicken, <laughs> lamb, bread. <laughs> Just joking. Okay, what would you avoid? Nothing. Okay, uh, avoid not praying on time, avoid not doing dhikr, avoid, you know, you know absolutely doing nothing that upsets, upsets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, this situation has, ha has uh, happened to us just because we've been far away from Allah Azza wa We have to take it this way. In order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift this affliction away, then we have to, okay, strengthen our iman. Okay, the, the closer we are to Allah Azza wa Jal, inshallah, okay, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove this. Always we say there is six different occasional dua that a person must, it's wajib upon you to do, okay, number one, because they are, the, you know, part of the uh, daily uh, obligation that a Muslim should do. In the other hand, it is, inshallah ta'ala, for your own security. Many people would say, what is it that we should do to avoid being afflicted with jinn, evil eye, and sihr, and so on and so forth. You say, well, you find this, inshallah ta'ala, on this daily uh, dua that you do, on uh, six different occasions. Number one, dua before you sleep. This is part of the duty of the Muslim. Okay? Dua before you sleep. Okay? Dua when you wake up. The, you know, the means the supplication before the sleep, supplications after you get up, inshallah ta'ala, from your sleep. Supplications of morning, supplications of evening, supplication when you are getting into the house, when you are coming out of the house. Each of those supplications, if you look into them, they are related into, you know, preserving you, preserving you and protecting you from harm that you are unable to deal with. Okay? Always. So, those six different occasion, okay, or occasional du'as. Supplications of morning, supplications of evening, evening. supplications before you sleep. sleep, and supplication immediately when you wake, wake up. Supplication when you are leaving your house, mm -hmm. huh? when you and when you are getting into the house. Okay? Absolutely. The other ones, after Salah and, you know, Subhanallah, the, the, you know, uh, after Maghrib is more and mm -hmm. after Fajr, including Ayatul, because those are, I think all of us, we do them. But we are talking about those things that we think, okay, they are occasional. No, they are not occasional. Those six different occasional du'as are very important, inshallah ta'ala, that we don't do them, you know, uh, mostly. And we have to, inshallah ta'ala, teach our children, okay, uh, to do them. The rest is really occasional. When you are traveling, the dua of traveling, the dua of rain, the dua of facing enemy, the dua, you know, they don't happen that much, but because you have your dua book in your pocket, whenever this, whenever you are facing that occasion, you take this book and read that dua, inshallah ta'ala, as a Muslim, okay, you have your trust in Allah Azza wa after you have tied your camel, then inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you from all kind of harm. Wallahu alam. Okay? Of course, you know, what should you do, you know, if the husband is, uh, you know, having a, a, afflicted with the, you know, the, you know, gin problem and, okay, uh, absolutely. Either people will be complaining from sleeplessness or excessive, you know, subhanAllah sleep. Okay? So on both we say, inshallah ta'ala, do hijama. Okay? Any uh, problem related to, you know, subhanAllah, you know, n n laziness and uh, unable to sleep or you sleep too much, then inshallah ta'ala, do hijama, that will adjust it. Okay? okay. okay. We'll, we'll, we might explain that inshallah ta'ala later on. Wallahu alam. Wallahu alam. Okay, so another question from uh, the sisters. Um, so one, one of the sisters asked, the writing of Quranic verses, putting in water and drinking, is this permissible and uh, recognized? Inshallah ta'ala it is uh, permissible. 
Okay, and this was uh, the practices of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it is known to us as uh, Arabs, for example, al-mahu. Okay, and uh, you know, yes, absolutely, you know, it should be written with Ja'faran in uh, clean service, like a plate or something, inshallah ta'ala. That is uh, 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 acceptable. Wallahu alam. Okay, another question, inshallah. Um, is there a reward? Is there a reward for remaining patient if you are, if you have been afflicted with evil eye or possession? If yes, what is the reward? Okay. This issue is an issue of, you know, uh, of difference between the scholars. And to me, I wouldn't support, you know, subhanAllah, somebody, you know, remaining without, uh, you know, taking means of, uh, you know, uh, uh, finding the cure. Okay? So, you know, in that case, there is no reward by whatsoever for somebody who is afflicted, okay? <coughs> and think like, no, I should be patient, okay? Uh, without me taking the means to remove this, uh, you know, this issue. I would say they are exposing themselves to, uh, you know, even worse situation where they might uh, be, you know, because one of the early symptoms of a person who is possessed are afflicted with black magic, the first one, which is the heaviness of the ibadah. The ibadah becomes very difficult. La laziness, a person as unable actually to enjoy reading Quran, uh, unable actually, to, you know, subhanAllah, to increase their, their ibadah. So what, are, what, what more indication would they need? Okay, until completely they stop salah, until completely they stop, you know, subhanAllah, uh, you know, the remembrance of Allah Azza No. Okay, we say you will be rewarded, inshallah ta'ala, if you are taking more, uh, you know, uh, uh, extra effort, inshallah, to uh, remove this uh, affliction, Allah alam. Okay, and um, one sister asked, um, her brother is very, uh, has been very recently diagnosed with uh, schizophrenia. Okay. Um, and is brought on by cannabis. Mm. Um, so um, she's asked, uh, she said that before, um, before he was, mashallah, very healthy, very healthy um, mm. could this be by evil eye? Um, and uh, she said that, is there a rukia for him? He's in another country at the moment. Okay. Okay, Ruqya is helpful in all cases, okay? Ruqya, you know, when we are talking about Ruqya itself. But the problem is, as I said to you, if somebody is, you know, subhanAllah, for example, come with a case which is uh, straightforward, uh, you know, untreatable, okay? Then doing Ruqya for that kind of uh, problem, it is a waste of time. As I said, you know, subhanAllah, somebody came with uh, completely, you know, uh, kidney failure. So, you know, the doctors have, you know, com you know, lost hope. There is no way that this, you know, kidney, it has stopped. Okay, it, sh it, it shrunk and, you know, the veins are not anymore, help, you know, subhanAllah, yani supportive towards it. Ruqya, okay, it's just dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, uh, you know, ease the pain and uh, relieve him from the pain and so on and so forth. Khalas, that's you know, subhanAllah, straightforward. The same thing, somebody who's taking cannabis, somebody who's taking drugs, and now start hallucinating and you know, subhanAllah, developed you know, some mental problems and so on and so forth. We say, okay, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but unless if you have removed, okay, the cause of all of this, indeed, that ruqya will not help in this. Okay, it will not help. Okay, so we inshallah ta'ala ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide him, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there is no difficult, there is no con con you know, condition or there is no situation which is difficult upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat. Mm -hmm. We believe that. But when it comes to taking means of removal, okay, the, the, the harm, then it, we have to be realistic that this is something that can be removed somehow by medicine, mm -hmm. by dua, by ruqya. Okay, so we inshallah ta'ala involve ruqya and dua so that inshallah maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to this dua to due to this ruqya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes this okay but when it is no a person is okay 
afflicted with such thing then it, it is uh, you know uh, can, difficult Allah can do therapy you know, absolutely you know, subhanahu, we have to subject the person to therapy we help him mm. okay by uh, uh, removing him from the environment changing the environment and supporting Rehab him rehabilitation. okay rehabilitation absolutely okay so that inshallah ta'ala can uh, 